Are you considering a manufactured home in a Florida land lease mobile home park? If so, you got to know the deal. A document called the prospectus is at the heart of that deal. What's a prospectus? Stay tuned. Buying a manufactured home in a Florida mobile home park is a bit different than in other states. In this video, we'll talk about a document called the prospectus. In the simplest of terms, the prospectus is what the mobile home park is offering. So in order to know the deal, you've got to read and understand this document. We will review why it exists, what's in it, and what's important to you. Once we've covered the prospectus, we will introduce the other two pieces of the puzzle. Hello, I'm Russ Watson. I created Florida Manufactured Home Living to enrich the lives of manufactured homeowners and educate the public on its benefits. Let's dig in. Mobile home parks have been around since the mid 40s. In the early days, these truly were trailer parks. You rented your lot on a month-by-month -month basis and either party, the lot owner or the trailer owner, could terminate the agreement in 30 days without cause. By the mid-1960s, large single-wide and double-wide homes were being sold and semi-permanently installed in mobile home parks. It was no longer a matter of just hooking up and moving to a different park. The need for legislation protecting residents in these parks continued to grow through the 70s and into the early 80s. In 1984, the Florida Mobile Home Act became law, addressing the needs of mobile homeowners in land lease parks. Codified under Florida Statute Chapter 723, it is this legislation that began the requirement to issue a prospectus. The Department of Business and Professional Regulation was given the task of overseeing these requirements. The prospectus or offering circular, together with its exhibits, is a disclosure document intended to afford protection to homeowners and prospective homeowners in the mobile home park. The purpose of the document is to disclose the representations of the mobile home park owner concerning the operations of the mobile home park. You are required to receive the prospectus prior to signing a lot rental agreement. This could literally be at the closing, but most parks recognize that it's in everyone's best interest if you read and understand it before you make a decision. So reputable parks will provide any interested buyer with a copy of the prospectus they believe applies to a particular home. Parks were often developed in phases. One section would be built first, then the proceeds from filling that section would be used to build the next. Each phase would receive its own prospectus, with the earliest phase often having better terms. If you are buying a new home, the park owner may give you a new prospectus. But if you are buying an older home, you have the right to the original. This document is so important, the legislature required the first page to have only the park name and several statements in conspicuous type. The first one implores you to read the document. The next page starts providing you with information about the park. A key piece here is the number of lots that will use the shared facilities. Next up is a description of the recreation and other common facilities. Key figures here are the building capacity and pool capacity. Compare them with the number of lots using the facilities to get an idea how crowded it might be. The days and hours facilities will be available is in the prospectus. These set the minimum, but management is often much more liberal. The park is required to disclose the arrangements for management of the park and maintenance and operation of the park property. 
the prospectus must describe the manner in which utilities will be provided. This usually includes water, sewerage, electricity, garbage removal, cable television, and storm drainage. Any fees charged by the park owner for these services must also be listed. Most parks have required improvements to the home. Used homes will have these improvements installed, but if they are damaged, they must be repaired or replaced in a timely manner. The statute requires a 90-day notice of any lot rent increase. Also, the owner must disclose any factors which may affect the lot rental amount. The required list is very straightforward, but that catch-all of any other fees or charges leads me to another common section. Many prospectuses have a section titled Prevailing Economic Conditions. Read this one carefully. The statute requires the owner must disclose how pass-through charges are calculated. Assessments and the right to assess residents may appear in some prospectuses. Take a close look at this one too. User fees for optional services in the park must be disclosed. This could be RV storage, uh, golf, and in some parks even the pool. Lot layouts will be approximate as individual lots are not surveyed. Some folks think zoning protects them, but in fact it can be changed. The park owner can add things like insurance requirements or additional age restrictions or other things to the prospectus as well. The original prospectus can be changed through amendments. Over the years, this can add up to quite a pile of paper and get very confusing. Some park owners take the original and apply each of the amendments to arrive at an integrated document that reflects the amended prospectus as of the date that document is issued. Other park owners simply hand you that great big pile of originals and leave the work up to you. I said earlier we would talk about the other two pieces of the puzzle. That would be the lot rent agreement and park rules. Park rules are part of the prospectus, typically an attachment, and are easier to change than the prospectus itself. In the next video in this series, we will get into detailed coverage of park rules. We will cover the lot rent agreement in the third part of this series. Be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when future videos are posted. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You've earned a glass of your favorite beverage. Hopefully, you've come to realize how important it is to understand this document in order to know the deal. You can get more information on purchasing a manufactured home in a Florida land lease manufactured home community in my book, Retirement in Florida Manufactured Homes and the Land Lease Option. The link is in the description below. If community living interests you, I suggest you review my other videos and see if a manufactured home community will meet your needs. Just click on my picture or the channel title below. Please give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. That really helps the channel. You can leave comments below as well. And thanks for watching. See you next time.